Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Elisop coming to you guys again with another video. Um, so today I want to do a retouching video. I want to retouch this portrait. This is a portrait of my very good friend Jillian. She's one of my favorite models. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen her a lot on my page. So this is an old image. I shot this like earlier in January. Yeah, January. And um, I shot it with my 5D Mark II and my 51.4. For those of you who don't know, my 50 is my favorite lens. I'm actually saving to get either the Sigma 51.4 or the Canon 51.2. May haven't really decided. Maybe you guys can help me to decide. Anyway, let's get retouching. All right, so um, this is the raw file. I have it in Capture One. There is no adjustments whatsoever done. Like, let me reset. You can see there are no adjustments over here. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the white balance of this image. I'm going to take the white balance tool, click here. I usually just click around until I find something that I like. I like this. All right, and then um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break up the shadows a bit. Bring down the highlights a bit. I have to try and get it a little bit flat, just a bit of contrast, because I'm going to add most of the contrast in Photoshop. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to make sure my diffraction and composition, I'm going to turn my sharpness up to 100. Light fall up, maybe bring this up to 17. Go back there, where are my levels? Okay, I'm going to bring, I want my blacks to be black, so I'm going to bring my levels in a bit. Yep, that's cool. You know what? I'm actually okay with the image just like this. So I'm going to go to my process and I'm going to send it as a 16-bit um, image, a PSD, open the Adobe Photoshop, and I am going to process it. So we wait for it to process. It's going to take a while. I'm probably going to speed up the video in the edit. All right, so we have the image now open in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my layer, non-destructive editing. That basically means that you can go back if you make a mistake. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to first of all take my patch tool and I'm going to first of all start cleaning the skin. Oops. Let's go around that. Let's go to the face. Just get rid of some of these. Zoom out. I the patch tool is my tool of choice because it enables me to work fast. But if I really want to do precise adjustments, I usually end up using the healing brush. So those are my two my two tools for cleaning skin. And I tend to do a little cleanup before going to frequency separation. All right, so I think that's cool. Yep. All right, before, after, before, after. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do frequency separation. Now I have a panel here in my Photoshop. It's called Ultimate Retouch 3.5. Um, I'll probably find a link and put it in the description of where you guys can get it. It's not a free, it's not a free panel, so you guys might have to pay. All right, I'm gonna run my frequency separation. All right, I'm going to put a radius of eight. Let's start with eight. Now let's go back, let's use seven. All right. Okay, now me, for my frequency separation, I tend to use plugins. One of my plugins is Portraiture. I know some people might use the mixer brush, and but you know what? I found that when you have tons of images and you're working and you have bills to pay, time is money. So anything that can make my life easier, I tend to do and portraiture is one of them. So I have everything maxed out here. All I normally do is just I take this um, eyedropper tool or I start with, usually start with the first one, take that and then select the skin tone. And then once you've clicked that, you see that it changes to the one with the plus. So anywhere you click is being added and you can see it here, that is your mask. So what you actually want to do is that you want to get something like this where most of the skin is covered and then you can click OK. Alright, awesome. Now we're going to go to that um, copy that I created 
and we're gonna put a layer mask on it. We're gonna take a brush, brush to 100% opacity, 20% flow. We're just gonna paint it on the skin. I'm just gonna paint it all over the skin. Right in there. And you can see that the portraiture actually did a very good job. Let's go to the other side. Paint that. I'm just doing a rough edit. Now, I will press texture and turn on the texture boost and zoom in. Now, when I press texture, one of the things I like about this panel is that it automatically selects my clone stamp tool. So, I can now zoom in and start getting rid of... Oh, uh, I'm going to get rid of this laugh line. I don't like laugh lines. It's just personal taste. So, I'm going to remove all of that. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this on the chin. All right, what else? Let's get into that forehead and clean it up a bit. You know, I remember seeing something here on the arm. Yep. Yep, there. It's going to go around looking for any skin imperfection I'm going to turn that off so I can actually see it and I think I want to clean up the forehead a bit more so let's clean that and zoom out so let's see the before after before after all right I will come here Select the um, layer and then take the mixer brush. And here are my settings 10, wet, 30, 30, 20. And I'm just going to blend the arm just a bit. The portraiture did a good job, but I just want to blend it a bit more. And I'm going to come underneath the chin and blend just a bit. Same with the forehead. Just blend it a bit. Awesome. All right. Next, I'm gonna do a bit of dodging and burning. I'm gonna use a curve. I will go to my dodge layer, make my flow 10, and I'm just going to add a bit of highlight surface. Um, I tend to do more um, dodging than burning. I think um, for dark skin. We don't need to do a lot of um, burning. We're already dark. Why won't make ourselves darker? But so I tend to do more of dodging. Let me dodge. Let me add some highlights into the hair. All right. I'm going to burn. I'm just going to burn the eyebrows a bit. Burn the shadows here just to give face some dimension. And the lower lip and the inner lip. So let's turn it off. Perfect. Alright, so let's merge all of those down. And here's where we started from, here's where we are. Here's where I started from, here's where we are. Alright, now time for some color grading. I am gonna add a gradient map. Change this to luminosity. Make the flow 20. Then I will add a curve layer. I will bring in the highlights a bit. I'm actually looking at her face, not the whole scene, because we're going to mask this out and bring in the shadows. And then we're going to invert the mask, take our brush, make the flow 20, and we're going to paint it. I'm 
placed on her. We want her to pop. All right, I'm going to add another curve layer and I'm going to use a preset color contrast. What that basically does is it brings in the red, green, and blue channels in by about 10. So I'm going to go to the red. I'm going to bring this down, bring this up, just add a bit of a curve. I'm going to go to the RGB. I'm going to bring this curve up. Don't worry if it's looking kind of funky. We're going to reduce the opacity down. Yep, perfect. Next, we're going to add a color balance layer. Our shadows, we're going to add some cyan, add some blue, uh, add some magenta, just about two. Go to our highlights, add some more cyan into the highlights, add some yellow, and some green. I'm going to go to our midtones, let's add some reds, some magenta some yellow all right awesome that is freaking awesome so you know what I'm actually very okay with this color grade so that's where we are I'm going to merge that now I like to here's a little trick I tend to like to stretch my pictures a bit to make my subjects look a bit taller and thinner so how I do that is that I duplicate my layer um command t command or control t for the free transform and then i hold shift and then either i draw it down or up this instance i'm going to draw it down just a bit just a bit just to make them look slightly taller next i'm going to use another um, plugin and that is um the nick plugin color effects pro if you watch some of my other videos you've seen that i've used this plugin a lot all right, so ugh, my system is so slow, so I'm probably going to have to speed this up a bit. All right, so it finally opened. So um, the filter we're going to be using is going to be the detail extractor. And here it is. I have detail extractor set to 5%, contrast at 6 and saturation at 8 and effect radius is normal. These are just the settings I use for Pascal almost all my pictures. So I'm going to click OK and let that process and we will see back in Photoshop. All right, so the image has processed and if I zoom in a bit, you will see that it's actually added a lot of texture into the skin. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is duplicate that and I'm going to go into my camera raw filter. I just want to add a bit more pop to her. I really want her to pop out of this scene. So I'm going to take my blacks down, take my whites up, bring my highlights down a bit, shadows, darker like that. Add some dehaze. Let's try some dehaze and some clarity. Bring my highlights down. All right, and bring my exposure up a bit. And I take off my vibrance. Let's see how that looks. In. Uh, okay, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Before, after. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to add a mask now. And I want to paint this effect only on her. All right, let's turn that off and on. Yep, I love that. Let's merge these layers. Let's see, our before and after. Next, I'm gonna sharpen. Um, if you don't know, how, if you wanna know how I got my sharpening action, um, I'm gonna put a link to the video of, I did a video in the past of how I sharpened my pictures and I'll put a link in the description. All right, so we're going to add a mask on that. I'm only going to paint it on the areas. Like what I want to sharpen are 
the eyes, the nose, the mouth, maybe a bit of the edges, like the hair. Snapping, sharpening the edges, just the edges, so she kind of pops. And let's merge that. And here's our before, and here's our after. Before, after. All right, guys. So that's it. That's how. That was just another retouching video. Hope you guys learned something. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. If you want to see more of these kind of videos, then please subscribe. You know, click that little bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I upload new videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.